Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. In our expert on the microphone series brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut, today we dive into a topic that touches nearly every family, cancer. Despite the advances in treatment, cancer remains a leading cause of death worldwide. According to the American Cancer Society, nearly 2 million new cancer cases are expected in the U.S. alone this year, with over 600,000 deaths. However, there is hope. Thanks to innovations in research and treatment, the overall cancer death rate in the U.S. has dropped by 32% from 1991 to 2019. That's saving approximately 3.5 million lives. But still, certain cancers like pancreatic and ovarian cancer remain among the hardest to treat with five-year survival rates lingering around 11 and 49% respectively. Now, the road ahead is challenging, but with experts like Dr. Balaji Panchapakesan pioneering new approaches, the future is so full of promise. Dr. B, or otherwise known as Dr. Baloo, is a professor, a scientist, and an innovator with a distinguished career that includes publishing over 100 articles in top scientific journals. His groundbreaking work in breast cancer earned him the prestigious Fulbright Academic and Professional Excellence Award in 2022. Today, I have the honor of chatting with him. He's going to shed light on the latest in cancer technology, discussing how the cure for cancer may be closer than we think. Welcoming now to the show is the incredible Dr. Baloo. Welcome, superstar. Thank you so much, Zen. How are you doing today? So excited to chat with you today. Thank you for joining us all the way from London. Now, Cancer affects all of us, whether directly or indirectly, making the quest for a cure deeply personal. And according to the World Health Organization, cancer is the second leading cause of death globally, accounting for nearly 10 million deaths in 2020. Now, despite these sobering statistics, advancements in cancer research are escalating at an unprecedented rate. And a study published in Nature Review's Drug Discovery highlights that over 1,100 new cancer treatments are currently in in clinical trials, offering hope to millions of patients. Now, Dr. Ballou, as we know, early detection can dramatically improve survival rates. And the five-year survival rate for breast cancer, for instance, is nearly 95% when detected early. Now, could you explain how your research in particular on cancer diagnostic devices is revolutionizing early detection and what impact this could have on survival rates across different types of cancers? Early detection is actually the key. How do you actually detect cancer at an early stage? For example, a single circulating tumor cell in the blood, there is actually tens of billions of blood cells. And you have only one cancer cell. How are you going to actually detect that? That's almost like a needle in a haystack problem. But uh, our advancements using nanotechnology and uh, chip manufacturing has enabled us to detect these cells at an early stage, which means that, okay, the chances of uh, survival is actually very high. Uh, why is that? Because if you treat, if you um, uh, detect cancer at a much earlier stage, the treatment options are actually much better for uh, for a person to actually survive. And with the advent of machine learning and artificial intelligence, you can actually be able to see techniques that can actually be able to detect cancer, even um, you know, like uh, from PET scans and CT scans, and as well as uh, MRIs, at a much earlier stage than what pos- what was thought possible. So I'm going to pivot to something. So metastasis is one of the most challenging aspects of cancer treatment. And by studying circulating tumor cells, researchers like yourself, of course, hope to predict and potentially prevent the spread of cancer, which could save countless lives. So now I want to talk about CTC. So your work on circulating tumor cells has been groundbreaking, and studies have shown that CTC can offer insights into cancer metastasis, which is responsible for, for which is responsible for about 90% of cancer deaths. Can you discuss how understanding CTCs could change the way we approach the treatment of metastatic cancer? That's a very good question. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, uh, let me actually give you some background. So when you have a tumor, um, some of the cells, okay, from the primary tumor will actually be shed into the bloodstream. And uh, some of these cells will actually, while most of the circulating tumor cells will actually die because there are lots of shear forces in the blood, but one or two of these cells here and there will actually, you know, attach to the endothelial wall and be able to uh, escape from the circulation system where they can actually create metastasis. 
So understanding circulating tumor cell is actually quite important in order to be able to uh, create new types of drugs. For example, um, if you can detect circulating tumor cells from the blood of a patient, and can we be able to use uh, techniques such as immunotherapy in order to flush out okay, these cells from the blood circulation? And uh, so understanding circulating tumor cells is so crucial in order to treat metastasis. You know, there is actually uh, the circulating tumor cells use a variety of different types of methods in order to actually go to a, a distant site in order to create metastasis. And they've actually provided uh, a lot of light okay, on how circulating tumor cells, uh, they use uh, macrophages as well as they use platelets in order to be able to go to a distant site. So essentially, there is actually a lot of processes that are actually going in the blood. And so cancer cells exploit some of these processes and be able to even uh, you know, influence some of these cells in order to be able to successfully go to a distant site to create metastasis. So it is actually pretty smart in terms of uh, how they actually travel. And, um, and, and, and now, with all these advancements okay, that is actually going on in cancer research, I think we are, uh, we are uh, really close in order to be able to uh, create drugs that can actually successfully um, uh, remove these cancer cells from blood. Wow, this is fascinating. You you have my entire attention. Now, immunotherapy has been hailed as the future of cancer treatment, particularly for its ability to harness the body's own immune system to fight cancer. And this approach has already seen success in cancers like melanoma and lung cancer, offering new hope where traditional treatments have failed. So immunotherapy has shown incredible promise with studies, uh, some studies reporting long-term remission in 15 to 20% of patients with metastatic melanoma, previously fatal cancer. So how is your research contributing to the advancement of immunotherapy? And what do you see as its potential to change the standard of care for cancer patients? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we are actually in an immunotherapy revolution right now. Um, in fact, uh, there was actually a study in 2022, which actually showed 100% success in endometrial cancer without using surgery or chemotherapy or radiation therapy. And that's exactly what we need to uh, have that goal. That is the goal in order to be able to eradicate cancer without very aggressive techniques such as surgery or chemotherapy or radiation. Since 2010, we have actually seen a tremendous increase uh, in immunotherapy drugs because we understand now that there is actually this molecule called PDL1 in tumor, which actually uh, the tumor successfully uses against T cells, which are our immune cells that actually protect our body. So, um, so immunotherapy is actually uh, quite great, and I, I see a lot of promise okay, in immunotherapy. Um, um, our, our work okay, uh, also focuses in some ways um, on actually advancing immunotherapy because of the fact that you can use a nanoparticle-based drugs as actually of the first line of defense and be able to go and blast some of these cancer cells that can actually create necropotic cell death. So what happens is when you have necropotic cell death, the, uh, you know, uh, the cancer cells will actually um, uh, secrete something called danger-resisted molecular patterns. And these uh, danger-resisted molecular patterns and uh, the tumor antigens will actually come out of the cell. And uh, these will be taken up by something called dendritic cells. And these dendritic cells will actually eat these cancer cells and be able to uh, put the, uh, and show the antigens on their surface. And they can then educate the T cells. And the T cells will actually then come and kill the cancer cells. So that's in a very simple way of how it actually works, although it's actually a quite a complex process. But, uh, but if you can actually be able to uh, create combination therapies, for example, like where you actually give either a, you know, a, a, a dose of chemotherapy or, or uh, other methods or nanoparticles where you can actually be able to kill some of these cancer cells, then you can stimulate the immune system. See, one of the things, uh, Zen, you have to actually understand when it actually comes to cancer is for the last 50 years, okay, chemotherapy and radiation therapy, they all create an immunosuppressive environment. So as a result, okay, this actually enables the cancer to actually flourish because the cancer cells often keep the immune system down. So when you have a tumor, the cancer cells are working very hard in order to actually keep the immune system down. Now we actually understand that, okay, one, we can actually be able to use the immune system of the body in order to be able to cure cancer successfully. And that's uh, where uh, the PDL1 and CTLA4 and the Nobel Prize was actually given to uh, Japanese scientists and American scientists for actually finding these molecules in order to be, and now we are actually able to create drugs such as epilumibab. Um, wow. lumibab, as well as uh, those those star lumibab, which is actually all these uh, monoclonal antibodies, they are actually called checkpoint inhibitors. It's almost like a cop. The T cell is the cop, and the cancer cell is actually the thief. The cancer cell is actually shaking uh, hands with the cop, 
And if the handshake is actually given, um, the cop actually thinks the cancer cell is a good guy. But the handshake is not given immediate death for the cancer cell. All the progress that we have actually made in this area uh, using nanoparticles would also like help in the advancement of immunotherapy. So I really think that, uh, you know, in the future, for example, like, you know, many companies that have actually talked to, they are actually producing, uh, they have a goal of producing, uh, you know, uh, 20 to 30 drugs, okay, in the next uh, four or five years. And some of these could actually be combination therapies that actually includes nanotechnology as well as uh, immunotherapy. Wow. I want to pivot a little bit. Now, breast cancer is one of the most common cancers worldwide, but of course, thanks to research and early detection, the five-year survival rate has improved to nearly over 90, 95%. And innovations in treatment are essential, of course, to continuing this trend and providing hope to, to those diagnosed with this disease. Now, the Fulbright Award you received highlights your work in breast cancer, a disease that affects one in eight women in the U.S. over their lifetime. Can you share more about the innovations in breast cancer treatment that you're research has contributed to and how these could change outcomes for patients? My mom was actually, you know, uh, diagnosed with stage four breast cancer, and uh, she's actually a a survivor now. So as I I mentioned before, uh, our work actually leverages, uh, you know, uh, nanotechnology as well as cancer biology in order to actually look for these uh, uh, cells and as well as look for, uh, you know, ultra low concentration of proteins, okay, that could actually be indicative of breast cancer. My Fulbright Award was actually looking at how circulating tumor cells and uh, tumor associated macrophages interact, okay, in breast cancer patients. All the all the work that we have actually done on breast cancer is actually, also we have actually developed uh, therapeutic strategies a while ago um, that was actually able to show that you can actually be able to use nanoparticles and also use uh, a very benign uh, form of radiation in order to actually be able to kill some of these cells. So, uh, so definitely, uh, you know, um, uh, one thing that we can do using nanotechnology and techniques such as immunotherapy is actually we can make it really non-invasive, you know, uh, and uh, what really is uh, very uh, uh, promising is, uh, and, I, and I'm mentioning this again, our goal should really be like, you know, to improve the quality of life of patients. And our goal should really be not using surgery, chemo, or radiation. Can we actually use modern techniques, okay, such as nanotechnology and immunotherapy in order to be able to improve the quality of life of patients? So you just get an injection every three weeks for six months, and then you just come back, and then the cancer is gone. That's wow. exactly what should, we should actually. Uh, um, okay, uh, I'm gonna. Up. I want to interrupt you there. So you have over 100 published articles. Your yeah. contributions to the field are immense, uh, and one of the recent breakthroughs mentioned in your research is this revolutionary cancer treatment. Is this what we're talking about, or can you elaborate on this new treatment? It's potential its potential to alter the course of cancer care. Right. So, yeah, uh, the one that I was actually talking about was the one uh, you, that you this mentioned, one, yes. the liquid biopsies. Yes. Yeah. The liquid biopsies is actually where, you know, uh, we've been able to uh, take blood from our patients and uh, show that, okay, these can actually be able, uh, we can detect them with 100%, uh, 90 to 100% uh, surety that okay, these circulating tumor cells are actually present uh, in the blood. So liquid biopsies is actually one of the, you know, important areas uh, that actually uh, that we focused on breast cancer. And my Fulbright was also based on liquid biopsies. But actually, I I took that to one further step in terms of looking at how tumor cells interact with macrophages in breast cancer patients. Now, the field of cancer treatment, without a doubt, is rapidly evolving with all these new technologies and approaches that you've so eloquently outlined. Uh, they're being developed every day, right? Like, like you said, from personalized medicine to novel drug delivery systems, the future of cancer is being shaped by these innovations. Now, your focus on immunotherapy and circulating, circulating tumor cells positions you truly at the cutting edge of cancer research. But with so much progress being made, how close do you really think we are to finding a cure? And what gives you hope that this goal might be achieved within our lifetime? That's uh, excellent questions. And like, you know, and uh, I'm a very positive guy. You know, I think, uh, you know, when I think of my mom's stage four breast cancer, you know, we all thought that we were going to lose her, but she's still alive, okay, after 11 years. And, uh, and so even the chemotherapy drugs, the radiation, everything has gotten so much better. I think that uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting emerging trends um, in uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, um, liquid biopsies, immunotherapy. All of these have to actually be combined. Not only that, there's gene editing technologies. 
So we have to use gene editing in some ways, okay, to be able to take some of these cells and edit their genes and then put them back, okay, in order to attack the tumor very specifically. So immunotherapy is actually great right now, but not, not all patients, um, you know, respond to immunotherapy. That is actually one of the problems. Um, and, uh, and so the thing is, uh, can we be able to, uh, you know, uh, able to use multiple different techniques or combination therapies in order to be able, um, you know, uh, coming from different principles. So, for example, I have always used engineering principles in order to solve a medical problem. So we can do the same thing, okay, you know, in uh, therapeutics also. So by combining different principles, I really think that, okay, you can actually be able to have 100% cure. But I have to also be cautious, like, is that a 100% cure? Is that a universal cure for all cancers? And the answer actually might not be, um, you know, a yes for that, you know, but we yeah. can actually go possible, but it, with immunotherapy and using the body's immune system, one can actually possibly um, cure major cancers such as breast, um, lung cancer, as well as uh, prostate cancer and, uh, you know, um, and endometrial cancers. So I am very much uh, positive uh, that we will actually get to a point where the survival rates will go up really high. Cancer will be a very manageable disease and some of the cancers will be completely cured and, uh, and you would not need surgery or chemotherapy or radiation. And that is the hope that we all should have for the this future. gives me this definitely gives me and a lot of listeners hope now if somebody said to you do you believe that your innovations and techniques can cure even a cancer that has been deemed incurable what would you say you know what i would say that uh you know uh, let's actually be positive because we have actually immunotherapy and some of these uh, cancers that were successfully cured using uh, in endometrial cancer for example the latest uh, data that actually came out in 2022 was actually bulky tumors. These were bulky tumors. They needed surgery or chemotherapy or radiation. And some of these cells could have gone and uh, hit somewhere and, uh, you know, the cancer could have come back. But then it then, I mean, like, you know, after six months, none of them actually had any uh, any of the signs of cancer coming back. So, so I really do think that, uh, you know, when people say that, oh, my cancer cannot be cured, I think that they should actually rethink again. You know, and, and, sure. and perhaps come seek your advice. Well, we are officially at the end of our segment, my dear friend. This was so insightful. Thank you so much for educating us, inspiring us, and giving us hope. That's really uh, at the heart of it all. And thank you so much for being a brilliant mastermind and an incredible human being. Thank you so much, Zen. It was wonderful talking to you. That was our Hydration with Heart segment brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. Now, as we wrap up today's discussion, it's clear that while the battle against cancer is far from over, the strides being made in research and technology are bringing us ever closer to a cure. And with experts like Dr. Ballou leading the charge, there is real hope on the horizon. Now let's continue to support this vital work, stay informed and hold on to the belief that a world without cancer could in fact be possible. Check out the good doctor and professor and scientist on LinkedIn at Dr. Balaji, and you can spell his last name P-A-N-C-H-A-P-A-K-E-S-A-N. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here in the Hydration with Heart segment, expert on the microphone series brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Once Upon a Coconut. Discover the refreshing taste of 100% pure coconut water that actually tastes great. Naturally sweet with no artificial flavors or added sugar. It's packed with electrolytes to keep you hydrated throughout your day. And with 10% of profits going to charity, every sip makes a difference. Pure taste, pure goodness. Experience nature's Gatorade. Visit Once Upon a Coconut or naturesgatorade.com. 